The operator of the Fukushima nuclear plant struggling to contain the radioactive waste still after three years, three years now after that disaster struck the facility, and the consequences continue to emerge across the ocean. Last August, Japanese officials revealed that around 300 tonnes of radioactive groundwater from Fu Fukushima was leaking into the Pacific each and every day, every 24 hours. Because of that, cesium levels in surface waters of the ocean could now be 10,000 times as high as the contamination that followed what was the world's worst nuclear accident, Chernobyl. The projected cleanup meantime is predicted to take up to four decades, 40 years. And on top of all this, a radioactive plume is already on its way to the US Pacific coast. It's likely to reach there this year. It's expected to peak too in 2016, but not even there. Uh, also problems in Slovenia, France, the Canary Islands, even as far as the Arctic, they've all been affected too. And on top of all of that, of course, it's the people helping with the cleanup, offer, cleanup efforts are suffering too. The people on site there, they're finding their health is getting worse. The people in charge of Fukushima Daiichi have revealed another mistake at the nuclear plant. They say highly radioactive water was sent to the wrong building. Workers inject water into reactors 1, 2 and 3 to cool melted nuclear fuel. They pump the contaminated water out and send it to storage buildings before transferring it to a processing facility. Officials with Tokyo Electric Power Company say between Thursday and Sunday, the water level at storage buildings dropped. It should have risen. They found four pumps that were not supposed to be used were in operation. The pump sent the water in the wrong direction into a facility used to incinerate radioactive waste. About 240 tons of contaminated water had flowed in. The officials say there's no way for the water to get out. They're trying to find out why the pumps were being used. Officials in southwestern Japan say they have detected the H5 strain of the bird flu virus in dead chickens at a poultry farm. The officials in Kumamoto Prefecture said more than 1,000 of the farm's 56,000 chickens had died between Friday and Sunday morning. Genetic analysis confirmed the H5 strain in two of the ten tested birds. The owner of the farm runs another one in the prefecture. The prefectural officials decided to ban the transfer of chickens and eggs from poultry farms located within three kilometers of the two farms. The officials have also banned shipments from farms within a 10-kilometer radius. Agriculture Minister Yoshimasa Hayashi says the initial measures are essential. We will work closely with the relevant ministries and Kumamoto Prefecture to thoroughly tackle this issue. The Kumamoto officials said they decided to cull all 112,000 chickens at the two farms. They said vehicles on nearby roads have been disinfected. Officials in southwestern Japan say they have detected the H5 strain of the bird flu virus in dead chickens at a poultry farm. Authorities are now culling all the chickens at two farms run by the same owner. Kumamoto Prefecture officials said more than a thousand of the farm's 56,000 chickens had died by Sunday morning. Genetic analysis confirmed the H5 strain in two of the ten tested birds. The prefecture decided to cull all 112,000 chickens at the two farms. Some 400 officials carried out the task through the night on Sunday. Officials also banned the transfer of chickens and eggs from poultry farms located within three kilometers of the two farms. They've also banned shipments from farms within 10 kilometers. Vehicles on nearby roads are being disinfected. A poultry farmer says he hopes the virus doesn't spread. I'm worried that sales may be affected by harmful rumors. Officials say that so far they have not detected any abnormalities at other farms in the prefecture.
Pig farmers across Japan are struggling to get a virus under control that could pose a threat to the pork industry. The virus causes severe diarrhea in the animals. It's infected almost 200,000 pigs across the country and has left nearly 40,000 of them dead. The virus is known as porcine epidemic diarrhea, or PED. It causes severe dehydration and loss of appetite, but does not pose a threat to humans. Infection is usually fatal for piglets less than 10 days old. Officials at Japan's Agriculture Ministry say the disease was confirmed in the southern prefecture of Okinawa in October. It's since spread to more than 270 farms in 21 prefectures, mostly in southwestern Japan. It's the first time the virus has shown up in the country in seven years. Analysts will be watching to see if Japan Post can boost its earnings. The Japan Post group of companies includes banking and life insurance firms. And the people at Japan's industry ministry are trying to promote better health among the nation's workers. They hope that doing so will help control ballooning costs for health care. Medical expenditures in Japan have grown by about $10 billion a year for the past several years. Spending topped $370 billion for the 12 months to March 2012. Ministry officials are working on something they hope will help. They're creating a set of indices to help businesses track efforts to cut medical expenses. One is designed to help executives keep tabs on how much they reduce employees' medical costs. Another focuses on so-called metabolic syndrome, which puts people at greater risk for stroke or heart failure. Ministry officials plan to finalize the indices by June. A Japanese woman is turning her battle with an incurable illness into a way to help others. She copes with her disabilities using humor. And she's written a book to share her experiences and her formula for facing hardship with a smile. Tasaka-san, I'm going to give you an enema. You'll feel a little uncomfortable, but please be patient. Chimes a loud, cheerful voice yet again. You know, I'm a weak, delicate lady. A dark story told with unexpected humor, an account of a struggle with an incurable illness. Mari Tasaka has a rare autoimmune disorder that has impaired her eyesight and restricts her movement. Tasaka works part-time as a teacher at an elementary school. She usually keeps the right side of her face away from the children. That's because she's blind in her right eye. Her illness struck suddenly. Seven years ago, she woke up one morning and found she lost her sight in one eye. Doctors couldn't tell her why. Four years later, she lost the use of both legs. She had to stop teaching. Experts finally identified the problem. Neuromyelitis optica affects the optic nerve and spinal cord. It's an incurable condition that could recur any time, and one day it might paralyze the rest of her body. The first thing I thought was, why me? Then I asked myself how I was going to live. Initially, Tasaka told herself she would be cured. But soon reality hit. When she realized this was permanent, she grew depressed. I wonder if one day I'll choose to die. She eventually started walking again. But she didn't go back to teaching. She didn't want people to know about her illness. I realized I would never be my normal self again. So the easiest thing was to just stay at home. Over time, her attitude slowly changed. She decided she wanted to share her feelings with others. People stare at you. That's what happens when you're ill. But if you hide it, you can't talk about the illness. Tasaka began writing her book. 
By telling others about her hardships and embarrassment, she wanted to regain some hope. Her strategy was to use humor. My butt reminds me of Munch's The Scream. When I look at myself from behind in a mirror, I want to shout, Ah, it's fantastic! It's a work of art! Tasaka's positivity in the face of hardship has struck a chord with readers, especially those with serious illnesses. Today she's seen some friends she met in the hospital who also have autoimmune disorders. They say Tasaka has helped them to open up to others. At first, I didn't want people I knew to see that I was disabled, but now I want as many people as possible to understand my disease. I've learned it's no good to let yourself be depressed. I think I'm getting more positive every day. Honesty and humor have helped Mari Tasaka turn her attitude around. Through her book, she tells others the same positive formula can work for them. Construction companies in Japan are thriving. Workers are already busy rebuilding towns across northeastern Japan. And there'll be lots more work to do as Tokyo prepares to host the 2020 Olympic Games. But project managers are facing a big problem. They can't find enough people to do the work. The number of skilled construction workers peaked 17 years ago. It's been declining ever since. Managers know they're only going to get busier, so they're searching elsewhere for employees looking abroad for trainees. I've come from the Philippines. I came from China to learn how to process steel. Employers are turning to a government program that brings people from overseas to Japan to learn vocational skills, then put those skills into practice. An estimated 15,000 people work in the construction industry as part of the program. That's up 30 percent from two years ago. Gwen Ho Huk arrived last spring from Vietnam. He was assigned to a condominium construction site in Tokyo. He says he wants to train in Japan, then head home, where construction skills are in high demand. I'm still learning this job. I think I can become good at it. He's really quick with his hands. He doesn't look like a trainee. Hook's employer says orders have been pouring in since Japan's economy started picking up. We have received another order today. But project managers are struggling to keep up. They say on an average day, they're about 20 workers short. So they've begun recruiting and training prospective employees in Vietnam. Apprentices spend four months studying Japanese and the basics of the job before they set foot in Japan. This advanced education means people are ready to become an effective part of the workforce when they arrive in Japan. But union leaders are worried about the influx of foreign labor. They say the program could drive down wages and reduce the overall standard of work. It takes more than just a few years to really learn these skills. The union leaders say they recognize the need for foreign trainees, but some say people in the industry may have to change their attitudes. Many people hold negative views about accepting foreigners. But are such views justifiable? We are now in the age where we have to think about accepting workers from overseas and consider how to make best use of their strengths. It's not just Japan's construction industry that's facing a labor shortage. Experts say managers in the agricultural sector and in a number of other industries may soon need to look abroad too.